Um, so hi everyone, I'm Su Chen from the University of Sydney and I'm here to present you the work I've done in my honours. So in my honours project, I tried to understand how different factors, in particular how plume arrival and tectonic forcing, control sedimentation along the Norwegian margin. So I work with Claire Millet, Tristan Sally, Sabine Serbovic from the University of Sydney, so it's on Dane from UCLA and our industry partner. Uh, Jakob Sosé, Jonah Hansen, and Tor of the Dosom from the Ecuador. So Norwegian margin. Norwegian margin is a complex system with different actors interacting and controlling the sedimentation. So it is important to begin by asking, so what can drive um, sedimentation over the post brief quiescent time? And tectonic can be one major control. So here's showing a G-plate model, um, showing the contraction stretching factor and ocean across age. So here's Norwegian margin. And being a passive margin, it's experienced phases of extension and reaches breakup at 54 MA. And apart from tectonics, dynamic topography also play a potential role as it influenced the elevation and dust sedimentation. So here's showing Bartlemore Atel 2017 dynamic topography model and red indicating the plume. So we can see the ice and plume arrive the area at 60 MA. It migrate basin with through time and resides under ice and in present day. So as we can see tectonic and dynamic topography has definitely complicated the system, but there are other factors that cannot be neglected, including sea level fluctuation, climate and flexion. So in order to gain comprehensive understanding of the region, we incorporate all the factors into Batlands model and test major control through time. So the initial topography is generated by pellet flow, which Claire has introduced earlier on. So with that prepared, forward models are run to test the road of each parameter. So as Yakov mentioned earlier, I've spent some time playing with the dynamic topo models. And as we ran different Batlands model, we realized that um, the dynamic topography model, the one I've showed um, previously, the ballot more at 2017, does not provide enough uplift. So with some inv investigation, we decided to modify the model in accordance to Jakob Sosset et al. 2014 model, which is shown in here. So this model is constrained by the present day residue depth and only. So in here, we can see that um, the new DT model was shown in orange, give us higher magnitude of plume uplift when compared to bad mode we shown in green. So um, this gives us the fair first result and it's also marked the first time sedimentation is used to constrain dynamic topography. So um, a number of models are ran with different setup and of course the newly developed DT has put into test. Um, together with a short-term sea level curve and onshore and offshore tectonics as indicated um, in this timeline. So here's a movie of the model. So left is the relative elevation and right um, showing the sedimentation. So um, we can see that um, ice and plume affect the area right at the start. And over time sediment are distributed along the margin um, in the midst of rift opening. So it turns out that this model gives us good estimation of sedimentation observed on Earth. So um, we can see from here that it's broadly reproduced the strata architecture observed from the seismic record. And with such good correlation, um, we then go on and explore the role of each processes. So I want to quickly show you how we extract the effect of dynamic topography as an example. So what we did is that we run model with and without the plume and see how sedimentation is affected. So um, here showing the Willard diagram of the model with dynamic topography. And we can see that as plume impinges, there's a rapid progradation and shallowing of the depositional environment. And these characteristics correlate well with earth data and also, they are not observed in the model without dynamic topography. And as such, we conclude that um, DT play and dynamic topography play an important role during Palosin when plume impinges. We've also done um, similar tests for all other parameters and conclude that different factors became um, a crucial driver of sedimentation 
over a different time period and time span. So um, if you want more information, feel free to contact me directly through um, email. I'm happy to take any question. And you can also visit my personal GitHub and BGH Private Atlas. So my models are made available there. Thank you.